Hey guys, it's Graham. Welcome back to another Amazon video. Um, I haven't been as active on the Tuesday posts as I'd like to be, so I apologize for that. Um, I might start doing some Amazon FBA live streams on Tuesdays or every second Tuesday or something like that uh, because I do appreciate all my Amazon subscribers. Of course, the uh, crypto videos are taking off now. Uh, I have gained a lot of subs from that. But I've also probably lost a decent amount of Amazon subs, so I do want to keep it consistent with the Amazon FBA content. Even though I'm not getting a ton of views with that stuff, uh, I still want to bring you guys at least some stuff that I think you guys might find useful. On the one hand, I do sometimes struggle with um, putting out Amazon FBA content just because I have seen a crazy amount of increase in competitors um, in some of my product niches and as an example I do know one of my subscribers who's you know a good guy and a great follower of mine um, <laughs> just by the nature of you know videos and and the help that's out there he got into a niche and it happened to be a competing product with one of mine so I guess that did kind of play with my mind in terms of me wanting to keep giving out information because um, you know, just by nature, if I'm giving out information, there's going to be more and more people starting to sell on Amazon. And even in my personal life, you know, people have seen what I've done and they want to get into it now. So I know that there is more competition. There will always be more competition. I shouldn't really have that mindset of worrying about what other people are doing or um, the amount of competitors. But um, it is the truth that there are always more people looking to sell on Amazon. And I guess I gotta just deal with that and just be better than them, which I know I can do. So, you know, in the end, it's not a big deal. Um, but today I thought I would focus on just kind of talking about the state of Amazon in 2018 compared to, you know, 2017 or 2016. It's crazy to think that uh, my YouTube channel as of April 21st is a year old. So celebrating the year anniversary on my YouTube channel is pretty crazy. Uh, I thought I'd bring you guys through just, uh, you know, what's different now in Amazon 2018 compared to 17, 16, and, and so on. Because as I'm sure you guys know, people always talk about it. Uh, Amazon was a lot easier to get into back in the day. Essentially, all you had to do was just pick a product that was selling a lot. And there just never was very much competition on any of these products. So you could pick literally anything, go in, give it away, 100 times and get all these fake reviews which you used to be able to do with Amazon and bam you have a successful product so today it's a lot different um, you need to be very creative with your product selection uh, creative in you know design and, and customizations the way you uh, manufacture your product so uh, I'm just going to talk about a bit of that stuff today um, not the most organized video but I it's like 8 30 8 50 in the morning and uh I gotta go for the rest of the day. So I thought I'd just put out a video today on uh, just discussing, uh, yeah, what it's like to start a product in 2018 now. So first thing I wanted to do is bring you guys through um, just some product examples. So like I talked about in one of my previous videos, this um, product right here was one that was showing up for basically everyone on Jungle Scout. And it was for me as well. So. This is actually a product I considered doing um, in America. It is, you know, the profit margin was decent at the time. Uh, it's relatively easy to source. And, you know, it looked like a good product because there was low reviews and there was high sales. I think if we check out Jungle Scout right now, we can see that the price is in the 15 to $30 range. Tons of sales among the top sellers and not many reviews. You might even look at this right now and be like, okay, I'm getting into this because the reviews are fairly low and the sales are insane, which might be true. And this is where a lot of people go wrong with their product research. And they just be like this guy and they just release one that looks the exact same. Um, nothing's different about it. It's just, it is what it is. All these suppliers are pretty much making the exact same felt letterboard and the problem is, is that everyone tried launching these. Seriously. I mean, the people that have actually stood out are like the people that 
were a bit different, like the pink and the gray and the black outline or whatever. But like, if I go back down here, page three, okay, there's uh, there's more, there's more, they're all the same. Page four, they're all the same. Like, what's gonna separate you guys from all the rest, right? Like, there's this guy has 163 reviews and he's stuck on page four. So basically it's just, you guys gotta realize too, um, when there is too much depth, because like everyone brought these out and everyone made them look the same. So there's nothing different about them. Everyone um, is trying to sell the same thing from the same manufacturers and only so many people can be on page one. So what I'm trying to do these days is just be creative um, just find something in my criteria. Like, for example, if I'm looking on Jungle Scout, not that I always do, but just be different. Like, look for heavier objects or larger or uh, products that there's not many sellers for. Uh, that's why I talk about my method where we go after products that are non-competitive and have just a few sales. And products like that can bring you $50 a day profit easy because you know, you don't have to really outrank anyone to get on the first page because there's only 10 sellers or five sellers. So um, that's something I've been looking into lately. Um, definitely Jungle Scout has become so mainstream and essentially all it is is a filter, right? So if you tell Jungle Scout to give me the best products based on your filters, um, people say, well, I don't want to be funneled into the same products as everyone else. Well, that's just nature, right? Like everyone is gonna be looking for the highest sales and the lowest reviews. That's just the nature of product research. So um, there is no issue with Jungle Scout on that side because um, it's just showing you the best products. So it's like, if you go after a good product, there is gonna be competition. It's not like Jungle Scout is just funneling everyone to the same products. It's just the matter of fact of if you're looking for a lot of sales and low competition, that's what everyone's looking for. And there is lots of competition for those products. So that's why I do go after maybe a product that has a higher profit margin, but only sells like hundred a month or, or something like that. If you can profit $10 a sale on a hundred sales a month, you're making a grand. And that's usually easier to get into than competing with products that are selling 500 a month, for example. So uh, that's definitely one thing to think about. But essentially what I'm saying is there's pages of these things. You're probably never going to beat these guys out. So another thing that uh, I think can lead to a successful product launch in 2018 is um, differentiating your brand. So a lot of people will just release a product and uh, they'll just let it sit on Amazon. But truly the way to really boost yourself forward these days, and I've even been a little bit lazy on this, is to actually create a brand around something. So um, similar products in the same niche, but not only that, uh, but also looking into like ex Instagram, Facebook groups, that type of stuff, and actually creating like a brand following. So people that actually care about your stuff, if you're selling like soccer equipment or something like that, and you have, you know, shin pads and socks and soccer balls, for example, like if you can build up a Facebook page over a year of like 10,000 followers, which is pretty simple to do or, or Instagram or anything, um, then you're going to get sales from those sales, uh, from those groups as well. And those are really going to push you above the competition. So if you're just putting the product on Amazon, it's going to be tough because there are other people establishing true brands that will be able to drive sales to their listing from those outer sources. And if you're not doing that, you're probably going to get left in the dust or it'll be at least a lot tougher for you to rank ahead of those people. So try to do that. Try to focus around a niche um, that I did start with an open brand. Like I did start without um, having any products in the same niche. They're just kind of all scattered. But now I do want to focus on building one true brand that I'm passionate about and uh, going from there. As for me personally, I know some of you guys are wondering, I did finally have a $500 profit day, so that was a pretty exciting day. Um, I have had some supplier issues lately, um, just suppliers being slow, suppliers making mistakes, definitely frustrating, uh, and I've definitely learned that I need to babysit my suppliers a bit more. I was trying to be like nice and standoffish and just 
um, not annoy them and then I would expect that they would you know respect me and do a uh, good work on my product but no I, I guess I've realized I have to hound them every week and say where's my product make sure you check it over five times because um, obviously they're like oh he's not messaging us it must not be that important so you know what I'm gonna have to start messaging them all the time and you know annoy them essentially because you know they did not meet my standards of quality when I was you know respecting their time and standing off so now I'm gonna be annoying to them I guess they've earned that and I'm gonna have to basically babysit my own uh, suppliers so a bit annoying of course and you can probably tell but um, I guess that's just the nature of dealing with Chinese companies sometimes because sometimes they have poor communication Sometimes they don't take a very good job of making sure they build your products correctly. Um, yeah, I guess that's a frustration. But I'm still keeping strong. I do have to cut out one, maybe two products. One for sure because uh, essentially it wasn't fitting people right. Um, people were complaining that you know the product didn't fit them well enough. And so they were returning it. And then Amazon's like, okay, we're removing your listing because too many returns and it's not profitable for us. And so I got it reinstated. I'm probably just going to sell out the inventory. Um, it's been selling really well though, which is so sad because I'm making like $13 profit a sale on this item, I'm making like five sales a day. So it's pretty frustrating to have to get rid of this product, but I can't really risk uh, paying for 500 or a thousand more units at like five or six dollars each and then having them truly permanently delete my listing so unfortunately that is a product I'm gonna have to let go I'm just gonna have to sell out my current units put that money into something else it's unfortunate but it is what it is and then with another product um, I tried to go for a super low competition easy niche which I did but Sometimes it gets to the point where it's like, okay, I'm making $10 a day from this product. It's not really worth it anymore. Um, I get through a whole batch of in just inventory in like half a year. So is it really worth it? No, I'd rather put that money into something that's a little bit faster moving. So I will cut out two of my products and then look to get into some more. Um, definitely the competition has gone up in some of my products, but uh, it's nothing I can't overcome. Just going to need to fight my way back to the top and, uh, you know, just keep uh, trying to progress forward. Um, for those of you that care, I, I did uh, le recently land some brand deals with uh, crypto. So that is kind of the whole reason I did change the direction of my channel uh, to crypto videos. Uh, was because I knew that there are people making good money from uh, getting payouts basically by new coins. And uh, for example, I just got a deal the other day with uh, the agreement to do three videos for this company and they will pay me $300 per video. So it's pretty lucrative. I think you guys can probably understand why I'm doing that. Um, it's pretty exciting, honestly, to have a second source of income like this now from my YouTube and uh, I'm gonna keep trying to grow the YouTube for crypto and then I'm still gonna focus on doing the Amazon stuff uh, because you know I, I enjoyed the Amazon stuff too and you know I appreciate all the people that initially got my channel off the ground so I'm gonna continue to do that stuff but uh, as of that that's pretty much it for the rest of this video guys um, if you guys have any questions leave them in the comments if you guys uh, you know like the video give it a thumbs up I'll try to be more consistent with the Tuesday Amazon videos, but uh, you know, I think like last Tuesday I was gone for the whole day. I couldn't uh, put out a video. I apologize for that, but I might even do some live streams in the future. So with that guys, I'm going to sign off and I'll see you guys next Tuesday. If you only watch my Amazon videos or feel free to watch my crypto videos. If you guys are into that stuff too, um, that's pretty much it guys. See you guys.